I want to start with with the question that sort of uh, that Derek's kind of let simmer right now, which is how would you guys say Subukwe is received today? So after fees must fall, after roads must fall, how how were people trying to construe Subukwe? Which is the Subukwe that they most turn on? To, they most turn to rather to to address contemporary South African realities. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Will, uh, for the opportunity. And thank you to, to, to Derek as well. I've really enjoyed um, listening to some of his insights and I got a chance to, to read um, the book over the weekend. Um, I mean, I don't know if I'm going to answer this question directly. Um, perhaps um, I can just kind of talk about my own journey. Um, so I arrived Please. at UCT um, in 2014 and um, the time that I arrived, nonpartisan politics were, you know, kind of on the rise. And um, with roads must fall and fees must fall, I think um, PASMA had fertile ground uh, to start off uh, something there. So um, I think PASMA was established in 2015, just before or after um, uh, the occupation of, of, of roads must fall. I mean, uh, so, I mean, yeah, that was quite a, an interesting time, right? Um, I just come back, um, I mean, I just arrived um, in Cape Town from East London um, and I was quite excited, right? About being a young person in a democratic South Africa. Um, but as I, um, I guess, started engaging in conversations with all kinds of people, um, saw that actually um, there's certain things that I wasn't aware of, right? Um, and so I fully immersed myself in the conversations that were happening on campus and um, I leaned into um, PASMA as well, right? Um, and I won't talk about my own experiences and my disillusionment with um, IPASMA. Um, <laughs> maybe Petani and I will talk about that um, offline. But I think um, I think it's interesting, right, to, to come into um, university and to learn that there were people like Sobukwe, right? Um, and we had never learned about them, you know, in our historical training at school, right? Um, you're kind of learning about the French Revolution um, and all these, uh, you know, the, you know the, the, the history curriculum is kind of regurgitated. You're learning the same thing in grade eight and grade nine, and it's not really useful. And only I think in grade 11 and matric, are you learning about, you know, uh, kind of BCM there and, and, and um, you know, the road to uh, democracy. Um, and so I think for me, what really attracted me was that, geez, there's such a richness of political thought, political history that I don't know about. But also I think what was really convincing um, was that, um, you know, the questions that I was thinking about um, are the kind of questions that, you know, the likes of Osobukwe were wrestling with as well. Um, and so I think the political education um, was was really valuable in my time at UCT as I was trying to form my own thoughts. Um, and so it was quite interesting because exactly this time last year, um, I just finished a six week residency um, at Robben Island. Um, I was looking at, um, you know, two Kosa chiefs who were incarcerated on the island um, and their wives followed them uh, to Robben Island. So Chief Makoma and Chief Siolo and where I was placed, where I was living, um, was only a few, um, I guess, steps away from uh, Sobupe's house, right? Um, and I had the privilege of going into the house and reading the letters and seeing, you know, where he lived. Um, but I was mortified, actually, to realize that actually the the tourists who were going into Robben Island um, did not get that opportunity. So what happens is that you go into Robben Island and um, the bus takes you past Sobukwe's house. Uh, the tour guide will say something, a few words about Robert Sobukwe, and then you'll move on to the tuck shop and then go back to the maximum security prison where you'll do an actual tour. And so, I mean, I think that that deliberate erasure of Sobukwe, right? Um, is 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 definitely still there, um, and so I I I mean I I really enjoyed my time at Robin Island, but I think that was something that I was just you know kind of um, shocked by that you know this erasure that we are constantly lamenting is something that is 
still going on and and there seems to be no kind of interest to remedy that um and so i think for me as a young person and the relevance of Osobukwe really is because you know the questions that i was asking um and thinking about during my time at uct um you know, uh, you know, I, I was like, oh wow, he was thinking about the same things, right? So I remember reading um, the speech that he he gave at Forte as 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 the SRC president, um, and I mean the, the entire speech is worth reading. But um, something that really stuck out to me was um, what he said, um, and he said, you know, education to us means service to Africa, and he talks about you should always, you know, strive to be um uh the the fulfillment of your people's aspirations right um and so i think that spoke to me and really stuck with me as as a young black person in south africa that actually me being at the university of cape town means something should mean something i'm not just there um but also i think to think that oh my gosh i'm not thinking about these questions alone um but also that there is a, a rich uh political history there's a rich um uh you know kind of archive that we have that we haven't actually tapped into um which is quite sad but also really exciting and so um i think the lamenting of the erasure definitely but also i think um not only to lament the erasure but to work and to reclaim south africa's political history and insert to um there is is, is an important project